how are you? Good What's morning. Coming? Good, man. I'm glad you li- glad you like to see Devin Haney. Still got to beat JoJo. Still got to beat JoJo. Not, right. not a foregone conclusion. JoJo's a dog. I got respect for that kid. I was just saying that, man, that as the fight's getting closer, I'm getting more and more nervous. I'm a Haney fan, but uh, JoJo's a tough SOB. You know, we can think what we want in that Rockamore fight, but he he lasted through it. No one's ever dropped him or stopped him. You know, but for Haney, with all these comparisons of how great he is or could be, I do want to see him at least drop JoJo. JoJo did start at 122, um, but I know Haney will be boxing... uh, first more than anything especially after the Linares incident but uh um Lou man thank you so much for coming on very uh happy for you I know George Cambosos by, 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 by the way Cambosos became a worldwide phenomenon this weekend yeah and this is prize fighting so we're going to check all our options out like we're not making any decisions we're hanging out enjoying the holidays the kids not fighting in the next 2 3 months anyway but it's going to be about the prize. It's going to be that's what it's going to be about. It's going to be about the path that gets him um, the most money and and the biggest worldwide acclaim. And say what you will about Haney, there are three fights, four fights bigger than him. Fact. Which and, are? And what? Which ones are those? Oh come on, you don't know. No, Give I, me I mean as as, as as the promoter, I would like to hear where your mind is. Headed. No, my mind, first of all, I'll be honest, I'm the promoter, right? But I don't tell the fighter or the management team who they fight, right? So ultimately, you know, Peter Kahn's the manager, but it's going to really be up to Cambosis and his old man because that's probably who's going to make the decision on who he fights. My job is to present him with various options, and here's the money you're going to make for each option, right? But if you're asking me the question, Lou DeBella's opinion, come on, Tank Davis is a much bigger fight, not even close. It's multiples of it. it. Right, on the it other just side is. Of the street, though. You yeah, know, and, and on the other side of the street. Who gives a fuck? What side of the street? What side of the street is Cambosis? They give a fuck. What I, I side of the street? He's is not on the way? same side. He's not no. in Floyd's camp. No, no, hold on. Come what on, Lou. You street? know the politics. What you know side the politics. of the street? I'm is Cam- with you. No, you're wrong. What side of the street is Cambosis on? I have no side of the street. That's why we have so much power right now. There is no side of the street. You think we're with the zone? I'm not with the zone. He, George is not with the zone. There you go. There is no side of the street. We're not with top rank. We're Tank, not with the zone. And we're you not think with Tank will take the fight? You think Tank will take that fight? You think who would take the fight? Tank. Do you think, you Tank, think Tank will take, will a take fight? that fight? I, I don't I don't know. I haven't pursued anything yet. Do I think that there is... I'm telling you, George is on no side of the street. Canelo is on no side of the street. And Canelo just made a shitload of money fighting on PBC. What side of the street is Canelo on? You know what side of the street Canelo's on? The Canelo's green on side. Canelo Street. <laughs> the He's green on Canelo side. Street. He's on Canelo Street. Right. He's on Canelo Avenue. But there's a difference between George Cambosos and Canelo. Like, um, no yeah, disrespect. Yeah. No, no disrespect. Said, but, uh, you know, so Canelo, wait, 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 Canelo can stop, float stop, around. Stop. I don't care, though. I don't care if you're a four-round fighter. You're If you have no tie to a network, you're on nobody's side of the street. And if you're on nobody's mm-hmm. side of the street, you're on everybody's side of the street. And if you're on everybody's side of the street and you're Lou DiBella and you know everybody and you've done business with everybody, you can wind up on any side of the street. So, so I mean, you know, there's no impediment from George fighting anybody with any other company. That's one of the joys of the uh-huh. situation he's in. He's not locked into a particular side of the street. I think and it's I and by the she- way, all you hear from the zone side of the street and Eddie Hearn is Devin Haney, Devin Haney, Devin Haney, Devin Haney, Devin Haney, Devin Haney, well, Devin Haney needs George him. Cambosis more than George Cambosis needs Devin Haney. That's a fact. Mm. Um, it depends. No, you it know why it depends, Lou? It depends on you what? know why it depends on no, let, let, do you know why it depends? Hi, by the way, my name is Lady Shan. Um, it depends because um, if Cambosos really wants to be seen as undisputed, I'm Lady Shan. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I'm not on camera. I, I've had no sleep. Uh, I look atrocious. Um, so, <laughs> so the reason, w- <laughs> the reason why, I, um, because if he really wants to be uh, uh, deemed as undisputed, he would have to fight Haney. Okay. Just no, like I, how I, we wanted Tio to do so, you know. Well, depends you know what, what route. George, George to beat the guy who beat the guy. Haney got his mail order. So oh. Haney got Damn. his mail order. Lou, it, yeah, but no, Lou, hold on, hold on, Lou. stop. Let me finish. I have tremendous respect for Haney. He's a great young fighter. Okay. No one. Yeah. George absolutely wants to fight him at some point, but it's going to be about 
the, it's going to be about the money and the opportunity and the biggest the biggest money and biggest opportunity that presents itself. And and there are a lot of alternatives. Also, George has George is a Greek Australian, so I mean, and, and he lives in Australia. So he 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 right he right now is a superstar when he gets off the plane in Australia and returns. And um, mm-hmm. and I know he wants to defend his title in Australia. So that's also going to be in our 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 thinking. You know that that a uh, you know a sold out arena uh, or or a stadium in Australia, um, you know it, you know could also be in his future. So we're going to look at a lot of options. But uh, who, who else you know, is I, another I, option other than Haney? You said me? four. Who else? You who said else? there's four like options. Who who else would you who else would you pose? I mean, I'm just, just, just in terms opinion. of fight, Dave Davis is one possibility. I'd say is a, well. First of all, first of all. Um, we have to determine what kind of, what we're doing next anyway. Okay. But, yeah, but we're just when, when you look at the big the fights, Davis is one, uh, Lomachenko, if he beats Comey, that's a big, if I think Comey is live, I promote Comey. I think Comey's a hell of a fighter, but, but, but the, you know, the, the winner of that fight becomes an option. Uh, if the winner is Comey, it's an option. If the winner is Lomachenko, it's obviously a bigger fight because of Lomachenko's status over the years right now in the industry. Um, it, 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 Ryan Garcia, if he gets back in the ring first, if George gets back in the ring and Garcia gets back in the ring, uh, within, uh, eight months to a year, right? I'm sorry. Ryan Garcia still is a bigger, is a bigger name than, than, than Devin. I mean, you know, people also don't have to understand something. Boxing fans, hardcore boxing fans watch and subscribe to streaming services for boxing. Okay. But the regular the, the, the crossover sports fans, the general sports fans, the casuals, like you don't build star status when you're when you're being developed on a streaming service. You just don't. You know, and, and frankly, in a lot of ways, the best move like for George's for the most eyeballs George could get in his next fight, a kid this good looking, this charismatic, this kind of self-confidence would be to see be seen by the most eyeballs. That doesn't mean that he won't fight on the zone. The zone's certainly a possibility. Sounds like but, top rank. What? Sounds like top rank to me. No. Yes, yes. No. First of all, nothing's top rank. This kid's not being turned over to fucking anybody. Okay. Second of all, no, second no, of when all, you I say mean, eyeballs, yeah. when you say eyeballs, obviously ESPN gives you massive exposure. Yes. Yeah, so does Fox. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, but Tank mm-hmm. doesn't fight on Fox. You're gonna have to convince Tank to take the fight and convince Espinosa to cut him loose from Showtime to do it on Fox. I mean, it, it is what it is, bro. I'm not particularly worried. I mean, there there, there are plenty of opportunities and and and, and avenues for George to take. And, no, they and are. I think George, George is in the catbird seat right now. I'll tell Most you his best want. option, Lou. And you and uh, I, you, you you and I know this is his best option. What's his best option? Kome wins. And you obviously allow well, Kome, Kome and Cambosos to happen in Australia because they're both your fighters. It's it's easier. I mean, look, mm-hmm. you you know, look. Whenever you have both guys, it's easier to make a fight. But but Is you know, I, I think there are an awful lot of people because you know Tiafima was. The I'm just, man. but you so, got to think about like you said, Cambosos has been very loud about wanting to fight in Australia. Out of all the names mentioned, Kome will be more likely to go to Australia. I don't know that Ryan makes economical sense to fight in Australia, right? Like, his his draw power is here. Tanks is here, you know? The kid just fought and trained one full year to fight a guy that was on most pound-for-pound lists in the top five, all right? So, like, again, don't presuppose that we're like, oh, yeah, we, we have to go fight one of these other guys next. There's plenty of fighters out there around 130 and 135 I mean, really, you know, that th- that have name recognition are top fighters. We're not limited to three or four names. Why? The kid. I mean, the kid is a kid. He's a young guy still. George Campbell. He's not an old fighter. He's a young fighter. You know, we don't have to do. No, anything. You can ask a question. Yeah, hold on. Not um, only that, but but Australia, Australia presents another opportunity. And frankly, Australia has its own pay per view. It's, it's a, the company called Main Event is their biggest pay per view distributor. Pay per view is the primary way. When you're a star in Australia, you can make a shitload of money. There's there's no other network that competes with pay-per-view Australian pay-per-view money. Some of the names you're throwing around in Australia mean very little. And there are other things we can do that could generate great money out of Australia. And then maybe what we're looking at is the most exposure we can get the rest of the world to build up to one of the other fights. 
I don't know. We have a lot of, of alternatives. Who are your and 130 gonna, options? And we're not going to, and that's, we're not going to figure it out now, like or before Christmas. Yeah. But, but, but can you can throw I, a, can you throw a 130 know. option? What's your 130, like a Valdez, a Shakur? Like who's a 130 that's sexy I'm not throw, enough? I'm not, I'm not throwing out anything. All I'm saying to you is there's a whole lot of 130s that would die to fight, have an opportunity to fight for, for all of those belts against Cambosis. Yeah. Uh, 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 the only point I'm making is, you know, there are, there are a lot of low, there. I mean, come on, Travante I mean, Davis. I think is one of the best fighters in the world. He hasn't fought someone in his own weight class in ten years. No, so I mean, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. No, so what, right. what I'm making is, what do you mean? Like, what, what options are you talking about? No, I'm talking I just, about anybody at one thirty. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah but I'm not. He's, I'm not. He's, he's not he's can make that weight. But you're taking it the wrong way. I'm not. Uh, you know, interrogating by asking what no, options. No, no. I just want to name. I was having fun, bro. I, ju I just want to name. I haven't been in a position to have fun in a while. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah, can it's I, your time I, to shine. Your I'm time to shine. Question. Go can ahead, Shan. Yes, yes. Can I ask a question, Luke? I'm sure um, you can. How, how soon would it be that um, the sanctioning bodies will uh, impose a mandate Great question. on uh, Cambosos? Great question. I don't think, I mean, I don't see anything coming very soon. Um, I mean, will Bob Arum try to, what are they going to get? A, I mean, Paco Valco Rossell's already said you really can't get a reigning cha champion, uh, you know, make a, make a champion a mandatory. The ratings organizations really can't do that. I mean, George George beat the guy with the franchise belt, so he has the franchise belt now in the BC, which which under their rules doesn't impose a mandatory. And, um, and you know, will, will, will Bob try to get Lomachenko? Will Bob try to get Lomachenko? Uh, inserted as a mandatory even if he does it, once that happens there's a, a year or so before you have to fight your mandatory um i no i don't think there's anything on the immediate horizon that's going to force george to do anything next beautiful like he does and you see with the uh wow. what you're saying with the pay-per-view the mainstream or uh, uh pay-per-view in australia how would us like in the uk and the us be able to access that pay-per-view there's Wouldn't a lot it have of have to cross network. No, well, you, well, yeah. There are, a lot, there are a lot of possibilities. I mean, you can geographically uh, block Australia and New Zealand and do a deal for the zone with the rest of the world. Theoretically, if you go Showtime, they don't care about Australia and New Zealand, so you could still go Showtime or Fox. If you know, because of the fourteen-hour time difference, and and it's later, like you can go afternoon Australia prime time, US, or you can go, uh, af you can go. You can do something where you're you're Australian, you're and you're doing it on European time. There's a lot of ways you can do it. Yeah. And put put together worldwide TV. You're right. You'd have to do a deal with more than one entity, but why can't you? You know. So mm -hmm. you're yeah. right, though. That that's a consideration. You know. But but the the, the pay per view market in Australia is going to be important to George's career because he's an Australian, and you're not talking about. Uh, the potential of generating a couple of hundred thousand in Australia. You're talking about the potential of generating a couple of million, you know, Lou, uh, or several million. Yeah. Lou, do you know if yeah. the Zone has uh, territory rights in Australia? Do have do they have like a the Zone Australia? Um, I, 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 I yeah, don't they know. just launched. I think exactly. I've heard that they recently launched. I don't think that they have a big penetration in Australia. Um, but it would make I, sense I, for them to get a Cambosos to help that. You know, yeah. get those. Right, well, if the zone wants to get a Camposis, then the, the, I, I'm, I, you know, the, the zone executives are people I know well, and they know my number and they can call me. Lou, I'm but so if, happy for you, honestly. If, if, but if the zone means, if the, thank you, thank you, Ness. If the zone means, uh, I, you know, Eddie's already pretending to be the kids promoter. If the zone means, <laughs> if the seen zone him? means, <laughs> you seen him in the ring post fight. He was so excited he, for he, George. He jumped in that ring so, <laughs> so hey, dude, happy. Kept, dude, they kept me out. He of the was ring. smiling. They kept me out of the ring. They said you can't get in? I Say no. The, ring. the matchroom is ah. let me in the ring. Man. What the hell? Hey, dude, 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 it is what it uh -oh. is. You know what? You know, DeZone did the fight, and Eddie Eddie did the fight. It yeah. defaulted to his purse bid. It was his night. Uh, you know, it was his show. You know, do I th would I have done the same thing? No. Do I think Aaron would have kept me out of the ring? Or do I think even any P you know, PBC, but the promoters generally don't go in the ring. But... I mean, I, I didn't make a big deal out of it. it. It is what it was, man. You know, but but uh, but the truth, the point I'm making is, I'm not interested. Like, he's not going to be handed off to another promoter. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and and if 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 a streaming service or a, a network wants to do something, look, uh, I'm willing to talk to anybody about doing something together. Obviously, 
uh, right now Eddie has Eddie has Haney. So if if we fought Haney, I'd be ta- I'd be negotiating and talking to Eddie. If if we fought Aram has Lomachenko, if we went that route, it'd be talking to Aram. Golden Boy has Ryan Garcia. Davis is with Al and uh, and and Floyd and and, and Leonard. Um, you know, so but I I've done business with every one of those people. So it's what about not like, Sky? Excuse me. To- to to net uh, to cross network with Sky pay per view. Yes, Box that Office. I think Sky presents interesting opportunities because you again you have Australian pay per view, you you do a deal with Sky and you have the UK with eyeballs, a lot of eyeballs. Yeah. And frankly, if you're looking to build a fighter's name and reputation, you do that in front of the most people, and more people will watch Sky than will watch a, a stream or a, a in all likelihood a stream or a pay per view. In the UK, so Sky offers a very interest. That, that's a very good point, lady. That that, that Sky Thank offers uh, Sky offers the ability. You put Sky together with Australian pay per view. Now you're going on and looking for another part. Yeah, but you cancel out the Americans. Now we're forced to use well, well, Fight why, why TV. Why do you cancel out the Americans? Because we're no, forced. Don't. We're forced to use Fight TV. There's no American broadcast. No, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why you? Why? Why? That's what well, Sky. Yeah, that's what Sky. That's what Sky and Boxer use to show their fights. They use Fight. Who said? Yeah, but who says that Sky? I, I, I'm, if Sky wants to do the fight in Sky's territory, in 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 the UK, and you'll sell and the I'm, American I, rights I, to I, someone I, and else, I, and we're doing pay per view in Australia and New Zealand, it, we're free to. It could be streamed the rest of the world on any entity. It could be on mm-hmm. US TV on any channel or streaming service. So right. I mean, you know, look, I'm going to be a little creative here because I have a fighter that has a market. And, and we're going to be creative here. You know, we're, I'm going to put together alternatives for, for George and his team. When they look at them, they're going to say, damn, that's a lot of money. And, and, and then they're going to figure out what they want to do next. Because I don't tell, yeah. I, I don't dictate to the I want to go play. to Australia. I've never been. I have, a, I have a friend over there. Uh, shout out to Mickey Caparelli. He works for Fox. He's an amazing videographer. And uh, I want to see if George is telling the truth. I want to see 60, 70, 80,000. I didn't go with the Pacquiao fight. I want to go, so get it done no, over there, big. man. I've been, I've been twice. It's big there, Ness. I've, I've been to been. Australia twice. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they love like there are a lot of the hardcore boxing fans there. There's, a, there's a good yeah, perception. Big. And you know what? Maybe you go to a stadium, right? And maybe you, maybe you go to a, a, a twenty thousand seat arena and sell it out, and there are people yeah. outside scalping. And your next, your next fight is in a, a stadium. I mean. You know, we're going to look at all, all we're going to look at all alternatives and we're going to present them to George. Look, George is in an enviable position right now. He's he's uh, for a period of time. He's the man. Lou, let me ask you. George is saying he's the greatest Australian boxer of all time. We were, you know, debating whether or not. the. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. What he said is some are saying. He didn't yeah, say, yeah. So, I so, believe I no, so so we want to debate that because obviously there's only Costa Zoo with the big win over Judah, but Judah was a one belt champ. Costa Zoo had two when I checked. He had the WBC and the WBA. They unified for the IBF. So technically, from a belt standpoint, this would be bigger, right? Well, I think he won. That you could maybe maybe argue that this is the biggest fight that an Australian guy won. Um, I, actually, I think there's very little doubt about that. I think Zhu and, and, and Judah would be the other one. Um, Jeff Fennick was a great, great fighter. I mean, Jeff Fennick's like an icon in Australia. Um, he's certainly in that mix. So it's really like, uh, I, I think that if, 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 if George is still reaching, you know, like to, to be the greatest Australian ever, he's certainly going to be in the mix, right? He's in the mix. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But but you got you, you got he's in the conversation exactly. But you got you got Zoo and you got Fennick. They're still in that. Hey, put it this way. George would be on the Mount Rushmore of Australian boxing. Mm. And, and the other guys that would be there would be, uh, you know, like Fennec and and, uh, and um, yeah. Zoo. And I'm trying to think who else, but I think Vic Darchinian was Australian. Really? Oh, he, he was Armenian, but I think he fought out of Australia, didn't he? I don't know. But I, I don't know who else would be on that mountain. Wow, because if, uh, if, if Vic is considered Australian, that's tough then. He, was, he did his thing in boxing. A lot of divisions, a lot of champions, a lot of defenses too. He got the yeah. I mean, I mean, he identified. Look, he was uh, he was you know he's an Armenian guy and he identified as Armenian. But I think he he fought out of 
Australia. But I'm just thinking more of the Mount Rushmore, which I think George is already on. Yeah. But George is also a young guy. I have, like, what I saw in the ring last night was a kid that is getting, I mean, look, I watched him against Selby. I didn't think, I, 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 I wasn't one of those people that thought it was a close fight. I had no doubt when the bell ended the fight that we won that fight. And and Mickey Bay is a, a tough fighter to beat. He's a very, very good boxer. And George handled Mickey Bay and, 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 you know, George hasn't fought schnooks. If you look at George's career, it shouldn't have been a 10-to-1 fight it, it, going in. It really shouldn't have been. And if I if I bet on fighters that are, that that – I don't bet on any fight where a fighter of mine participates. But yeah. if I was a betting man, I would have jumped all over that 10-to-1 because it never should have been 10-to-1. A lot of people um, in my community did, let me tell you. People have been sending me betting slips freaking for the last four days, man. You know why? Because yep. people in your community – liked what they heard out of George's mouth the guy, and, and probably got a sense that maybe T.O.'s life wasn't so together. Um, but it, but uh, look, I think George sold a lot, some people on himself. Most people he didn't sell. Most people didn't believe in him. Mm -hmm. That kid knew he was going to win that fight. He knew he was going to win that fight. Yeah. I mean, it was honestly, what he did is pretty remarkable. And, and he fought, he is. you know, and, and he also fought a beautiful fight and, and honestly showed everything you need to show to be a great fighter. He showed great offense. His defense was mm -hmm. way better than Tiafimos. He showed a yep. chin. Man, he got hit with. He got hit with a, he got, a couple. Of, he got hit with dude, so many right with hands bombs, in man. one round. He got hit with so many right hands yeah. in one round. I thought it was over and it didn't happen. Right. Uh, me too. You, 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 you think that kid, has, that, that kid has a chin? Yeah, he does. And, 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 and he's a and young a beautiful, fighter. And a and, and beautiful double better, left hook. His double left the, hook is crazy, man. He, he has a tremendous left hook. He also knows how to move in a rank. He, his movement. Yeah, he's fast. Is, yeah. Very much so. He's, he's got he, fast he's, hands. He's very agile. He's got fast hands, and he's got a great boxing IQ. Like his movement okay. around the ring was very smart. I see a kid getting better. I think before George is through, he will be the greatest Australian fighter who ever lived. So, so to yeah. be yeah. clear, so oh. I just wanted to touch back real quick on the uh, on the part where you know we want the fight to happen in Australia. Uh, how is Australia with uh, you know the COVID restrictions, this new Omicron variant, and all this I stuff? I don't know, man. You can't, can't predict, you, can't, you can't predict anything. I mean, but you know, you can't predict anything. The, this new variant, sort of like troubling from a standpoint of travel. Australia and New Zealand have been two of the safest places on earth. But part of the reason it ha they've been the two of the safest places on earth is that they have totally closed their borders down. You know, to yeah. a large extent. They've you know, just, I, I, have, I have people. I have people yeah. criticizing me online because, like, Junior Fa after the Parker fight hasn't done anything, couldn't get out of New Zealand. I mean, <laughs> literally, that was he was he was shut down. You know, and, and by the way, yeah. like, I, you know, I, I, I uh, there's there's a very limited pool of heavyweights in New Zealand. So if you can't leave, you know, I'm not putting Junior Fa in with a three and eight guy. You know, but but uh, you know. He, there have been some easing of restrictions, particularly on athletes. Um, I hope this Om Omicron thing doesn't go out of control because that could be a factor. But you know what? Yeah. George is going back to be with his family. And if he's locked down in Australia, here's another possibility. And I got to think this way because mm -hmm. I'm a smart guy <laughs> and I'm, I'm pretty good at this. There are Dude, a couple it, of – there are a is, there a, is there a is there a, I'm sorry. Go ahead, lady. I was just going to ask. Is there, an, is there an option that he could fight at 140 for a fight? Um, I don't think we're going to look at any any move up and wait now at all. Um, but there are. But a point that I was going to make though is that there are world ranked guys who are on the continent of Australia who live there. There are a couple of fighters who you may not know right now. And Frank and I, by the way, I'm not in a position to be stating their names because I ain't <laughs> saying I do either. Um, but I do know that this is a fact. I know there's a 20 and 0 kid from Australia who's world ranked in a number of, in a couple of the organizations. If you're shut down. The kid's still going to fight as long as you can have an event in Australia. So, so I mean, might if there was an Omicron problem, is there a possibility we would look to something that we would have to make within the confines yeah. of yeah. of the continent? The answer is yes. Lou, I want to double back to eyeballs. Um, the zone put out the highlights for the fight, and it's already at over three million in twenty four hours. Obviously, To fought Lomo on ESPN, and that had. 3.6 million or 3.2 million. Do you think there's a difference between YouTube views and uh, terrestrial views? I mean, I think I, 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 I'm, you know, 
you're asking the wrong person because I'm 60 years old and I, I mean, I ain't as young as you motherfuckers. So like, it's a little bit different for me and my, and on my own mindset. I think there's a little bit of a difference terrestrially. Um, but eyeballs are eyeballs, right? Um, yeah. that, that being said, there's eyeballs and then there's revenue generation, right? So you can count the eyeballs, but when the eyeballs are on terrestrial TV, and you, if you're actually doing 3 million views on terrestrial TV, you have a shitload of value to that terrestrial TV. If you're doing, yeah. uh, if you're doing pay-per-view and you're Canelo and you're doing 800,000 or a million homes or 600,000 homes, that's multiples of what other people are doing. And that's also a shitload of money. So you have to like YouTube videos post facto. Yeah, people are seeing it, but it's not necessarily putting money at in the fighter's pocket. Now, that being said, it is getting exposure and it's potentially putting money in the fighter's pocket going forward. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but, yeah. but uh, so I think it's great. Right. But it's for, in terms of revenue generation, it's not the same thing. So, question, Lou. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, Chulo. Um, question Is it um, worth preempting that, you know, this lockdown, this new variant could happen in Australia? Would it be a move to say to George Cambosos, have a little time with your family, but then relocate to the States just in case and then we, you could get him locked in and or the UK. multiple fights? Or the UK, where there's no uh, Well, first of all, who knows what will happen in the UK also. But, but, but put that aside. And who knows what's going to happen here, right? Because of all the travel, I mean, there are more, there's more travel from Africa. I mean, if this Omicron turns out to be a bad thing, it's going to be a problem here. Um, now I'm hoping it's not, and I'm triple vaccinated, so I'm really hoping it's not. But um, can you, you get know, I'm into ho hoping that the vaccinations, uh, you know, uh, you know, stop this from getting out of control? And and I, and I don't think we should be panicking. But but you know, put that aside. You have to know. You have to, you have to know your fighter, and you have to know his camp and his people. George is a family man, first and foremost. Completely, like that is his most important thing. He has young kids. He's got a a couple of kids, not oh, one child. Baby. He's got a beautiful wife. He likes to, he, he's an Australian. He's, he, he that, that's where his base is. Um, I'm not expecting him to relocate uh, at all. I, I think if, if anything, if there was those kind of problems, I think he'll, he'll stay on the continent and fight in Australia. Um, if there's a pro if there's any kind of problem next, uh, relocating, I mean, he's, he's going to stay staying here right now. He's, he's doing his victory tour. I don't know if you've noticed, but he's been everywhere, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, interviews and, 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 and doing everything he can. He's going to go to the, um, he's going to go to the Haney fight. Um, I'm going to be mm -hmm. talking to my friends at PBC this week. I believe he'll attend the Javante Davis fight. Mm. Uh, Yo, look uh, at Lou. <laughs> My friends at PVC. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, dude, 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 dude. Al was my friend for 19 years. I mean, we, we we haven't talked in a while, but he was my friend for 19 years. I've said this many times before. The chances that Al and I would never talk again were probably very low. And um, and I think you could expect that lines of communication are will be opened again, and um, or or are opened. And um, and then also, I'd like to see maybe George will stay for the Lomachenko fight. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of PR possibilities for him in the first few weeks of December. So, you know, like right now he's dying to get back to his kids, man. He hasn't seen his kids. And even when he was in Australia, he was training all the time. So, he, you know, he wants some family time. And, and he, and by the way, that was a grueling fight. And by the way, training multiple times in a year, not stopping in a year, waiting for a fight for a year, dude, that's exhausting. So, yeah. Right now, we're not even thinking about January, February, or, or even March. No. We're not even thinking about them. So there is no rush. I have the time to put together some some situations to present them with some alternatives. So, you know, we're, we're at the moment, we're in a good situation. I have mm -hmm. an alternative in a situation that would love to come on the show and create one with you. Now, I don't sabotage. I learned my lesson uh, with Tyson, Wilder, Shelley, and... Eddie, Hold up. And Eddie and Eddie. But I do have Mr. Haney who's who would love to have a conversation with you. He says, Ask Lou, did he or George request franchise status? Um, well, first of all, we were fighting the franchise guy. 
And second of all, Haney would want, if Devin was in a position to have the franchise belt, he'd want it also. Look, I love Haney. And, and, and he, I mean, he knows how good I think he is. Kid, the kid has got tremendous talent. You know, I got no disrespect for him whatsoever. Do I want to be ambush right now? Not really, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, uh, Devin, I, you know, I'm happy to talk to you, but bro, I love you. I think you're great. Um, and, and, and Devin's going to be around for a long time. So is George. You know, everyone was raving with this Four Kings nonsense the last year, Four Kings, Four Kings, Four Kings. There's one fucking Four Kings. It was Hagler, Leonard, Duran, and Hagler. Those were the four kings. But there's a tremendous amount of talent. At t- and I, I'm, I'm viewing Tiafimo as moving up to 135. And despite the fact he got his ass whooped, I still think Tiafimo, if, he, if he's happy and, and he's healthy um, and he makes some changes around him, I still think Tiafimo could be a great, great fighter. And, and Tiafimo knows this. Like, I'm thinking about him right now. I love that kid. I think he's a good kid. Um, I, I don't think you've seen his best self recently, but I think he's a good kid, and I think he'll he'll get back to the top of the mountain. But there's a tremendous amount of talent around 130 and 135 in boxing, and and whether there are kings, there that's going to be determined in the future when they actually start they're round prin- robbing. They're princes, right? They're princes, <laughs> and, and 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 the thing that 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 you have to remember what made those four guys the four kings. They fought each other. round robin of fights. They fought between. everyone. They fought, they fought each fought other. They fought everyone, and they fought, most importantly, each other. They, all, they all fought each other. They fought each other. Lou, last and, one, because I know you. my producer said you only had 20 minutes. He just reminded me. So last one. Uh, I got a few more minutes. I got I to gotta do. I gotta get ready at a, for an 11 o'clock Zoom or something else. But I, I want to switch subjects. I want to switch subjects, and we'll, we'll yeah. focus on your gold medalist. I won't butcher his name. It's Javalov. Back at here, Jalalov. Jalalov. So I, I got an idea, Ness. Just call him the Big Uzbek. The Big Uzbek. So That's what he calls himself. That's his nickname, the Big Uzbek. Dude, Big he's a Uzi. Beast. He's a monster. He's a monster. Well, he's six- I, I want to know specifically. Obviously, we just seen that he uh, signed with Probellum. No, what- no, 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 no. You didn't see that. Mm. So he's fighting on Probellum's inaugural show. You didn't see he signed with Probellum. Their press release don't say that. It says he's that that he's promoted by Debella Entertainment and they're doing that fight in association with them. But that shouldn't surprise anybody because. I did a lot of business over the years with Richard Schaefer, and Richard's a friend of mine. And and Harrison Whitman, I don't know if you guys know Harrison, but Harrison for a long time was the chief lawyer at Top Rank, and Harrison's also a friend and a guy I did a lot of business with. So, um, and they got and they and they're heavily they're heavily financed. Uh, uh, their company's heavily financed. People are saying, well, they don't have a platform yet, whatever. They have a lot of resources, and they have two very smart people running the promotional entity. And and I like both Harrison and, and Richard, and the kid needed to fight this year. This opportunity popped up. Um, and and by the way, it doesn't mean I wouldn't do business with Provellum together in the future. Like, I'm not closing any doors. Uh, you know, let's face realities. If I've wanted to operate, you know— the, the reason I'm still standing and breathing and doing what I'm doing in boxing is because I'm pretty good at it, right? Mm-hmm. But I haven't had a platform for years. I've had to jockey. I've had to deal with this marketplace where I got to go through Aram to get to ESPN. I got to go through Eddie or Golden Boy to get to the zone. I got to go through, uh, you know, I got to deal with Al and, 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 and whoever to go on Showtime or Fox, basically. And, and it's, you know, it's, that's not the easiest marketplace to maneuver so i'll do business with anybody if it's good business here's what appeals to me look i haven't done a deal with probellum for the kid yet for the future we have we're doing this fight but i'll tell you what appeals to me about probellum they're a global entity they establish themselves to promote around the world if you look at these little moves they're doing that that aren't getting a lot of noise individually but they're establishing like sort of like a foothold in a lot of territories around the world if you're spread out enough around the world you, you know, we talked about eyeballs earlier. How mm-hmm. do you get eyeballs? That's one of the ways you get eyeballs. If you're going to all these in the countries where you have local television, you're getting eyeballs. Jalalov wants to fight in Uzbekistan. Not for nothing, I, I, I have a lot of Uzbek friends and everything else, but I'm not planning on spending a whole lot of time or promoting in Uzbekistan. Okay? He's also a devout Muslim. Um, he's an Uzbek Muslim, but he's, he's a religious Muslim. He takes his faith very mm-hmm. seriously. 
he wants to fight in the Muslim world. So him fighting in Dubai is not, it's a, it's a sort of a natural thing, right? Um, you know, because you're, you're fighting, you know, he's fighting in Dubai. Uh, he's, he, he's, th this guy has the opportunity to be the most popular Muslim fighter in boxing. He, he certainly mm -hmm. has the ability to be a heavyweight champion. So I'm going to look does, top. Does Ramadan uh, affect that though? Like, but oh, yeah. that I mean, type of fight? Oh, Jalalab doesn't, within... doesn't fight during Ramadan. He won't fight uh, during okay. Ramadan. I mean, he's, he's, when I say he's a devout Muslim, I mean, he's the nicest, he, he's, he's a nice man, Jalalab. He's a very nice yeah. guy. But, but he wouldn't like take, like, like, he has those same rules with respect. He's very devout. He follows the, his faith. Um, like Ritirbiev won't like uh you know touch another woman or or or, or you know take yeah. pictures it's the same thing with Jalal. um so the so the the muslim world is an attractive place mm -hmm. for him to become an attraction right he, he has the ability look there's a lot of money in dubai saudi arabia qatar the emirates yeah. this kid could be a star fighting a lot of a number of his fights over there doesn't mean he won't fight there was America. just a card there there was just a card in dubai like literally weekend gone right and um, there's going to be a card and, and, his, and this coming card is december 11th and and you're also yeah. probably going to see pro bellum being pretty active in 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 dubai saudi etc and and that's one of the reasons why you know they are an interesting uh you know collaborator they're an interesting potential co-promoter now that being said you know, we didn't announce any deal today. We just, we, you know, he's on this card, and I, and I'm, and I'm, you know, and I, and I thank Richard and, and Harrison for for allowing him to be on this card because I want, we wanted to get him in the ring this year, uh, one time. You know, that he had eight professional fights. He's eight now with eight knockouts. Eight uh, and yeah. but, but, but see, the thing that people don't understand about Jalalov also is he's eight now with eight knockouts at his pro. But for the period of time that I promoted him, the couple of years I've had him. He's been a, he was a full time amateur until the Olympics. He fought a full slate. He did all the tournaments. He did all the major stuff. And in between, we got him eight wins as a pro. So he's already tasted the pro game. And you know, he'll do mm -hmm. a six rounder in December and then probably come back next year starting with eight rounders. And I I, I really expect by the end of twenty twenty two that Jalal is a world ranked heavyweight. And he's six foot six. He's massive. He's even, I think he's bigger than that, actually. I think he's more like six, seven, six, eight. Um, you know, the thing about him that's interesting, though, he's massive. Yeah. He punches like a mule. Just ask Richard Torres. Um, oh, so this is the guy that knocked him out cold? Yes. Oh, man. I'm going crazy right now, Lou, thinking, like, who's Joe Jewel, Jewel, Jewel. Wow, that guy's yeah. good, man. No, but the real thing about him that's interesting is he's huge. He's got huge power. He's fast but too. That's it, man. He moves oh. like he moves like a light. His agility heavy. for that for that his size. agility for his Great. size. I, I've never seen it. The only person I've seen with a, like agility like that for his size is Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury. Fury. Yeah, that's it. That's that's the only that, one. Yeah. And and, and I, I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb. Jalalov eventually will be the successor to Tyson Fury. Wow. Do you think they could spar? Do you think Tyson I, oh, Fury would be able to get him into spar? I, I would love that. I think it'd be a great opportunity. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm not one of those people that thinks you don't spar someone, eventually you might fight or something. I, I think you spar guys that are the best because that's how you get better. By the way, yeah. you don't think you don't think that ferocious Cambosis was hardened by Manny Pacquiao? Oh, you absolutely. Don't think all those I was going to say that. I was going to say that. That Ooh. gave him the, the edge for sure. <laughs> Manny you know, was out there trying sure. to... You know. and, and that was another reason, by the way, that I was telling people. I tried to tell people, like, I, I don't tell people bet on my fighter, but I was trying to tell people, you're acting like this ain't a fight. This is not a 10 to 1 fight. I told everyone this about the Cambosis fight. It's not a 10 to 1 mm -hmm. fight. This is, this is a friggin' competitive fight. Manny Pacquiao, who I love, by the way, Manny Pacquiao told me a couple of years ago, but George was like, I had just given George a few fights. I just signed George. And, and, and he said to me, you know, George fought on, we sent George to spar with Manny. George fought on Manny's undercard, um, you know, on, on, on one of the, when Manny fought pay-per-view, I think it was the Jeff Horn show or one of the others. I don't remember, but he fought on Manny's undercard. And after the fight, George called me with uh, knucklehead Sean, Sean Gibbons, <laughs> on the phone. And, and Manny said to me, you got a really good fighter here. Like people don't don't you know don't sleep on him, don't let people sleep on him. You got a really good fighter here. This kid is going to be 
a, a really, really, really good fighter. Like I'm very impressed. And and you know, iron sharp uh, iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. Why is Lee Selby calling Cambo Sons out again? I don't know. Pay day. Pay day. You, you, pay day. day. <laughs> you, you know that. I don't blame Lee for I know calling that. him out. I mean, Lee, Lee was in the ring with him. Uh, Lee didn't win, but it was a, it was certainly a competitive fight. Um, and I don't blame I Lee for 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 yeah. talking about the, that. You know, putting a, putting his name in the mix. That's what that's what guys are supposed to do. And by the way, right now. Until proven otherwise, George is the best, and 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 I, I I applaud Lee for reaching out and saying he wants to fight the best again. Lou, back to your heavyweight. You have you never had conversation because I feel like he won gold, and we should have heard a big announcement. So like, no the zone convers. I just feel like they're really invested in heavyweights as well. Nothing. No, but the problem is that the zone doesn't like. Here, here's the thing: I get a heavyweight. I invest money in a kid, and I get him to eight and up, mm -hmm. right? While he's an amateur, no one else signed the kid. I I signed the kid. I got him to eight. No, Vadim Kornilov is his manager. Um, you know, we we the, the kid continues. I, I I'm on a program with him to allow him to compete in every tournament. He's fighting in between. Um, I run. You know, I roll the dice about the Olympics. The kid goes in and he does his thing. Looks like King Kong and wins the gold medal. Okay, shouldn't the zone be calling me? Or shouldn't ESPN? And I, I notice I'm not saying Eddie Hearn. I'm saying shouldn't the Zone be calling me? Mm -hmm. And by the way, I, I communicate with the Zone. Like if, if they know if they were, had an interest in a the Zone deal with the Bella Entertainment for Jalalov, that I'd entertain it. I've never gotten that phone call. Okay. And if the Zone's wish is that I sign him with to Eddie Hearn, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. Because I'm I, I'm tired of that man. I, I shouldn't develop a guy that could be heavyweight champion of the world and have to hand him over to another promoter because because the marketplace is closed. I mean, frankly, it's unfair competition and it, and it, and, it, and it's an unfair playing field. And it's one of the reasons that so many fucking fights suck. Not that we haven't had a run of some decent fights. We have. There've been some very good fights this year. There've also been an enormous amount of shit televised around the world. And, and part of the reason for that, and I guess you know, the, the lady said earlier, uh, you know, the different sides of the street, Dif these sides of the street bullshit is exactly why the sport is contracting instead of expanding. On our best yeah. nights, we are the greatest sport on earth. Boxing used to be the sport of kings and used to be the number one sport in America, moved down to number two, then to number three. Now we're listed on, you know, on sports websites with other, okay? That's largely our own fault. And the size of the street bullshit has made it worse. Mm -hmm. And by the way, look, go trace the demise of HBO Sports. Where did the real collapse of HBO Sports begin? It began with the exclusive deal with Golden Boy. When HBO had never done an exclusive deal in 45, 50 years of existence, they did an exclusive deal with Golden Boy, and you saw you saw the whole ship begin to sink. Lou, speaking about exclusive deals, you know, I I I started to talk to my community, and I said maybe we should, you know, put it into the universe, do a show a month or a week, just dedicated to whoever is in charge of the zone, whatever the billionaire's name is. I didn't never bother to Google, but it's like, why can't he offer you? the same thing that he offered Golden Boy. Why can't he offer Al the same thing that he offered Golden Boy in the zone? Okay, I, I'll be honest. I don't give a shit about getting the same thing Golden Boy has. I don't give a fuck no, about I mean, getting the I same thing. No, I mean I, dates. And by the way, hold on. I, I don't want to be Eddie, and I don't want to get the same shit Eddie has either. Open the motherfucking doors to everyone and make the best fights possible. Stop the exclusive bullshit because you're just hurting a sport. And by the way, you know, as long as, like, like, look, the zone's a business. And, and, and they're starting, honestly, they're making decisions that are the best for their business. And if you look around the world, the places that the zone is growing the fastest and doing the best, it's because they have a breadth of programming. They're, you know, it's, it's where they have soccer, you know, or what they call football, but we, you know, soccer, um, and, you know, and, and they, if they have major soccer with major boxing, that's very attractive to sports fans there. There are very few places, frankly, Great Britain's probably one of them, where where boxing can 
is a locomotive that can pull the train. It couldn't do it in America. And, you know, th that's one of the reasons why it, it's pretty obvious the zone has de-emphasized it on out of American boxing. They're still a force. And if you're an American boxing fan, you're pretty much well advised to get the zone because it's not super expensive and there is a lot of good programming if you're a hardcore boxing fan. But but the zone's not reliant on the American market now for its success. They've turned their attention much more globally, right? So, um, you know, I understand what they're doing, but I, my attitude is what would be best for their business is not an exclusive deal with anybody. It's opening up the gates and saying, we want the biggest events and we're going to allow someone else to make them. But they can say that they've been open, but in, in truth, there's been no real opportunity for other promoters there unless you went through Eddie. I mean, is it that hard to get a sit down? I, I just don't see how if they're in the uh, no, boxing business. No, it's not hard business. to get a sit down. I, I, I can get, I mean, I can make a phone call and, and look, I like the people that run the zone are smart people and I like them. I don't know the, I don't know the billionaire that's I mean, ultimately you just have the owner, so many, but you have so many American fighters. You got big shot Shaw, another American heavyweight. You know, now you got Cambosos, you got the, the, the Olympic gold medalist heavyweight. You got Amanda Serrano. She's still yours, right? No. No, Amanda Serrano's with... Move. She's managed by Jake Paul's manager, and she's yeah. promoted by Jake yeah. Paul. Most valuable... Which, by the way, is a little is very cozy. Um, no, I, I, uh, I, I, I am not involved right now with uh, Amanda Serrano. Um, I, that's a whole other story, but I'd rather not even talk about it. No. What do you think about Johnny Fisher? Johnny Fisher, the commentator? No. I the think, former boxer? I, I forgot the wrong name. The, no, no, no. The uh oh, the, the, new the, guy heavyweight, that has, the heavyweight. The heavyweight. The heavyweight. Yeah. John, He's the, like 3-0. The, and oh, three the and Rumford four, Bull. Four and oh. Have you heard of the Rumford Bull? No, I haven't heard of him. No. <laughs> No, he's a, he's a he's a new prospect heavyweight. He'd be knocking everybody. Well, he's only like four and zero, but he's knocked out everybody. And I was just thinking about your fighter matching maybe with his with that fighter. That would pick. Let me tell you something. I would matchup. probably match. I would, anyone I haven't heard of, I'd probably match Jalal with. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. Look, look, um, look, it, it, look. I. 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 Let me tell you something. Heavyweight division is interesting. Look. There's. By the way, if you're a fight fan. I know it's Triller. It's this Thursday night. But if you're a heavyweight fan of heavyweight Tuesday boxing, night. This, this Thursday night, December 2nd, Hammerstein Ballroom in New York, um, Michael Hunter's fighting Jerry Forrest, uh, uh, Trey Lippy Morrison, Tommy Morrison's kid, is fighting Mike Balligan, former 49er, NFL player, Cassius both Chain. undefeated. Real, really, like, really interesting fight. Like, should, like, should be fun. Um, Cash is changing. I don't know why Michael defeated. Hunter is fighting that guy. Yeah, he's fighting Thursday Michael night. Michael Hunter fighting Forrest is so yeah. lame. No, I don't think you, you, actually, I that's because she so don't lame. she don't know American boxing, Lou. Forgive us. No, no, she's that's she's lame from the UK. Because, no, no, no. Don't forgive me. I do know. I do know American boxing. I grew up with American boxing. If you saw the Zach that fight, fight is a that. Yeah, I did. This is what I'm saying. And uh, I mean, he 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 came out. Uh, did he win? It was it a draw? It was a draw. Or he won? I thought it, I thought he, it was actually, a draw. I thought he should have won at one but, point, but when you get knocked down, he won morally. He won morally. When you get knocked down three times early in the fight, you don't complain about a draw. He, but um, yeah, he got yeah, a moral but, victory. He got a moral victory in that fight, was, and he came yeah, out but, of that fight a lot Michael more Hunter popular. Chulo. What about yeah, but, Michael? For Hunter? Michael Hunter, Chulo, isn't that a step down? No, that's a not, tough not fight. His last I, opponent. That's a tough not fight. His last opponent. Exactly. Not his previous opponents. Not really. Honestly, he has, He's number two in the world. But honestly, Forrest is the. Look, I watch the fight. I think Jerry yeah. Forrest is going to give him a fight. But um, but also on the card, Cassius Cheney undefeated against my fighter, George Arias, that Dimitri Salid and I uh, promote together, uh, undefeated. Um, it, it, it's a night of heavyweight boxing, and it's going to be a fun card. I think you get it on Fight TV this Thursday night, Triller Fight Club. Um, and I'm promoting that show at, at the Hammerstein Ballroom. Lou, and what, what's up with, I mean, again, when you got to go, oh, wow, but Butiev is yours? No, Butiev, I, well, I still uh, have an interest in Butiev, but but Butiev right now um, has to deal with PBC. But technically he's still yours, so you had to kind of do the no, co-made I mean, thing. No, I mean, like 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 technically. What I'm saying is I had a participation. What that means is I, I, made, I made a few bucks. Okay. Uh, he's going to have another fight. Uh, his next fight will be 
uh, with PBC, I'll and, make a few bucks. And it'll be but, Jerron but Ennis. I'm not saying – right now my contract was ending with Bataev. I did a deal that allowed him to do these fights at PBC because obviously that last fight was a great opportunity for him. And I think, I think you, know, uh, you know, we knew what was going to happen. We believed we were going to win. And I, and I think that, that uh, PBC is very heavily invested in that weight class and at 54 where there will be opportunities for him. So, um, you know, Bataev's next fight will be at PBC. And it'll be Jerron Ennis, right? Um, uh, that's I I I not I can't I can't say that. <laughs> yes, it is. Come on, Lou. I Give can't us say something. that. All right, I all right. I think that. that's oh Conwell, man. I, and listen, you're gonna have to leave, or I'll keep you forever. What's up with Conwell, man? I, I, I got I got two minutes. What's up with Conwell is, look, dude. If I had a platform, Conwell would already be a superstar. Mm -hmm. But he's in a great position. He just got elevated to number five by the IBF. He just got elevated to number seven at the WBC convention in the world. He's undefeated. He was very active over the last year. He hasn't fought in a few months. Um, he'll be back in early next year. You'll see him back in January, February. Um, and, and honestly, uh, you know, Conwell's another example. I mean, if this was a normal world, I would go direct, directly to a network and I'd have a deal for Conwell in, in no time at all. But the doors are closed. So, right, so I got to be more creative. But, but Conwell will be back early next year, and 2022 is going to be a huge year for Charles Conwell. Just wait and watch. And Alicia Napoleon, is she done? She's, she's not done. Her baby is, uh, I don't know, around five months old now. Um, she, it's funny you ask because she literally is getting back into the gym next, next week. Uh, next week she starts getting herself uh, back in fighting shape. I, I think she's probably – four months, five months away from fighting. Um, but she she used the pandemic as an opportunity to 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 start uh, start a family with her husband. Um, I mean, well, they have the, the, her husband, they, they have a child that the was her husband's child, but this is their first child together. And uh, she started her family. She took a little bit of time off back in the gym next week, probably back in the ring by April. And last but not least, obviously, uh, Elvis Garcia, did he, is he, stay, is he staying, going down? Because I've seen something. He's going to, he's going to bounce around with the opportunity, but God, man, he looks like a different human being and he looks like a different fighter at, at about, you know, even if he's heavyweight, he needs to be around 220 where he is right now. Mm -hmm. um, 220 is technically bridger weight, but in all the other organizations, obviously it's heavyweight. Mm -hmm. Bridger weight presents an opportunity for him because he's a small heavyweight. And frankly, at Bridgerweight, I have no doubt that he could be world champion. But I think that Elvis is a problem for a lot of people. And at this weight, he's extremely mobile and agile. Think uh, Andy Ruiz mm -hmm. in better shape. And, yeah, and, yeah. Um, and Andy Ruiz is a hell of a boxer. Elvis got a lot of talent. People are, don't sleep on Elvis Garcia. I'm glad you raised the question. Thank you. Guys, I got to leave. I got to jump. Uh, I got to get on another call. No problem. Thank you so much for the time, Lou. Thank you. Good for being good being bye good bye. Thank you. Right. Bye, bye bye. There you have it, ladies and gents. Lou Di Bella. For the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars and title betting shows. The list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out. Get these questions answered and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.